we're going to do a walleye video. What we have to do is I matched up the work order with the tag. Nice walleye. And uh, I'm going to get them out of the plastic. This isn't the best way to freeze them, but a lot of people don't know that. So we just go ahead and I note any damage that's done, like on the tail here. It's got some stuff going here, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll repair that. Nice walleye. Uh, what we do first is we get our measurements. We're going to get our overall length. We'll go from the tip of the nose. Some, wherever you order form, some just want the total length. And I'm going to go to the tip of the tail, 29 and a half. Okay, then I'm going to do an eye to, eye to tail, eye to base of the tail. That's right here. And we'll go 23 inches. Sometimes I like those measurements. Different form. Wherever you get your forms are different. Then I go from the gill, the beginning of the gill plate. I put G to tail is 19. Okay. Then we take our circumference of the fish at the widest spot. And I got 16 inches my circumference. 16 inches. So I'll, we got all the pertinent measurements. Now I'm going to order this form out uh, because it's a big one. And I don't want to carve it. I can buy one for about 20, 25 bucks, and that's what we'll do. But sometimes I'd carve my own form. But what I want to do is we're going to make this kind of a show mount. The guy wants a. He wants kind of a pedestal mount, which is a lot different than a regular fish mount. Regular fish mount, you just go ahead and a commercial type mount, you just split it up the side, take all your stuff out and be done with it. This one here, we're going to split up the belly because it's going to be on a pedestal, and then we'll seal this back up. Uh, this is a little bit more difficult, uh, but if you're ever going to put a fish in a show, this is a good way to do it here. I've got my tools out. And hopefully I can get through here. This is a tough son of a buck here. But we got her started here anyway. Go right in the tail. I'm going to try to get something to hold this up. And uh, so you can watch while I work here. Okay. It's just something like it's hard to find something. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this towel right here. I got another towel here. I'll just go ahead and put the towels right here, and that way you can see them. You'll see Toby come in and out of the picture here. What we're going to do is we're going to try to stay pretty close to the center line and go right up through here. We'll see how we do here with this scissors. These bigger walleyes have some tough scales. And what we'll do, I'll show you how we'll put this back together. Another thing is the guy wants to save the fillets, so this is something I don't normally do, but this, this is the kid's first big walleye, so we're going to do it. You see, and then what we'll do is we'll get our form, we'll, modif we'll get our form if it doesn't fit quite right. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and get it so we got a nice tight seam here at the bottom. We'll probably have to modify it, but I'll get that ordered up today. And I'll put this in a pickle for tonight. Okay, now does anybody remember what our pickle is? Our pickle is 50% denatured alcohol, 50% water. Buy a couple cans of alcohol, a couple gallons. Put it in a five-gallon bucket. Put in a couple of, uh, now you see where I'm going here, right up the middle. Put in a couple gallons of water, and you got yourself a good preservative. I've had fish, and my own fish, and I couldn't get two. 
that have been in this for years, a couple years now. I've got some bass, and I looked at them the other day, and uh, they look just fine. Uh, okay, we got us a fish skinning knife. You see the serrated edge on it. Very handy tool to have. Uh, you got your tape you need, a couple pairs of scissors, a fancy flushing spoon, regular tablespoon. I got my tape measure, a couple knives. And now what we're doing here is we're just going right under the skin with this. We want to stay as close to the skin as possible. We're just going to take our time. I mean, it's the dead of winter here, so you'll hear my furnace running a lot. Anyway, we're just peeling that off the bone. Or not off the bone, off the flesh. And down here at the tail end, they're a little bit tougher. I'll show you how we go, how we're going here. Let me see if I can move this over just a little bit so you can get a, a better perspective of it. Let me zoom that in. Let me zoom it out. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it. But anyway, you see how I'm doing it here? This is this is a gonna be kind of a, what I call a seamless type walleye mount. Okay? You won't see this seam because it'll be close to the pedestal that it's sitting on toward the bottom. We're saving the meat. You see that? Makes it a little bit more difficult to do these fish this way. Well, not a little bit, quite a bit more. But this is what he saw a bass mount that I have, a pedestal bass mount with a bass chasing a large, uh, large mount chasing a bluegill. And uh, he doesn't have a lot of money, and he asked what I charge. I said, well, Normally I charge more for these types of mounts, but for him, seeing that he was excited and a young guy, I, I went ahead and give him a break on the price as usual. I'm a sucker for that. So, anyway, you see how I'm going here? I'm up here to this fin now, and you're going to see, I'm going to have to make a decision here. Let me, let me slide him down a little bit so you can see it. You see the fin here? I'm going to peel that back. Get that skin like Okay. Actually, you always want to pay careful attention to the anatomy of, a, of anything you're doing. I do. I pay real close attention to the anatomy. That way I know... <laughs> You know, you can you can name about everything on a fish. You learn more doing taxidermy than. But anyway, you see this fin here? I've got it right down to the fin butt. Right here's the fin butt. We're gonna go ahead and snip that off. Just like my goat. I, I recycle my my uh, goat scissors for other scissors for my. Hard, hard to skin because they work real good. They're, they're what you call a hoof trimming scissors. And they're really good for cutting through bone or things like that. So, you see how that comes loose there? Here's that fin butt. Here's most of it right there. So, now we're just going to go ahead and work this down the side. We've got all the way up into the gill here, almost. We've got another fin to contend with right here. So, we're just going to go ahead and work this down. Still, ideally fish, what, what I like to do is I like to work with them when they're just almost semi-frozen. They're kind of stiff, especially crappies. Crappies are a hard fish to do. So... Okay, now we're right at this fin here, and you see this fin, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that loose, and I'm sure there's other people that are going to tell you, this song would then, 
that's not the way to do it, but this works for me. And I think it works for a beginner too. Or somebody just wanting to do a walleye, a project. It's a, it's a nice way to get started. I mean, we got him almost skinned all the way down on that side. What will be working 10 minutes on it maybe? So what we're going to do is do this side. Okay? Just get your knife in there. This serrated edge makes it kind of easy. The bellies on fish go bad real easy. You see how I got that? Right down to that fin. The butt of that fin, they call it. I want to try to stay out of the belly area. I try to do that. I don't know. Just, uh, I don't want guts all over the place while I'm working. But even after you put these fish in the refrigerator, a lot of times the acid in the bellies for their digestive juices just keep right on working. Okay, now we're right up to what the, the anus, the angle fin and the anus. What we're going to do is we're going to come in from behind this and cut that loose. And lo and behold, there's the phone. i got to kind of watch my phone because we're right in the middle of deer season and uh, this is my bread and butter time of the year. I hate to say it, but my bread and butter isn't made off videos. I, I don't even break even. I just do them to do them and uh, give people a chance to learn how to do it. But anyway, you see how I'm kind of going down here? This tail will be a different... We'll go after this tail in a little bit, but we want to get this side down first. I'm going to just go ahead and go down the side. See how nicely that comes off? And we'll get up here. <laughs> I honestly think somebody could get my videos and, and get it. At least find out if you like taxidermy after you do a few projects. Before you invest in a school or whatever, or class, formal classes, try a few little projects. See if this is what you like to do. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to work with uh, wildlife, fish, things like that. But you, until you get your hands into something like this, some people are a little bit squeamish. Uh, I know hunters that can't even field dress their own deer. So, you know, it's, which is kind of odd, but that's the way it is. Sometimes you think you want to do something, but when you get into the guts of it, it's a lot different. Especially like, you get into a bear or a wild boar, something like that, you know. It's, uh... It's tough work. Or somebody brings in a buffalo and says, here you go. Last time I had to have him, we loaded a buffalo head and a buffalo hide into a, he dumped it out of his horse trailer, had to get a wheelbarrow. It was all I could do to get it up on a table to work on it. And that's just some of the things you run into. I'm using this knife again to cut through this fin. And we'll clean that up when we get this when we get this head off of here. We gotta get the head off and I'll get that all cleaned up. So this is taking a little bit more time because we're doing this type of a mount. Now if you were doing a regular mount, you know, commercial type side mount, only one side showing, you, you don't have to do all this. I mean, you still gotta be careful, but you end up being able to go. You don't have to be quite as careful. Now I'm cutting off this fin right here. And we're going to go through the whole process of doing this fish. So if you get yourself a walleye, you can watch this video. We'll take you through the painting process, the whole works. You'll be able to do it.
Okay, you see how I see how I'm down there now? We're clear up into here on the fish. We got the skin all the way up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get this tail area, and then we'll get up to the back here. Now walleye and bass are, are kind of good fish to start out on because they're a little bit and bluegills. Not a little bit. They're a lot tougher than a than a crappie. Uh, you first fish, don't start on a crappie. Crappie, will, uh, you need some experience with other fish, let's say that, because the scales come off so easy on a crappie. You just look at them and you lose scales. Okay, we're going to work down the tail here. We're going to go all the way down into the very butt here. We're going to get this. See that? We're just kind of going down there. I can feel this this bone right here under these fins. The fin rays. Oh, watch it. We don't want to lose too much meat there. Normally I don't save meat on a fish because I just got too much handling to do on them. You see I'm clear down into the butt the tail butt area here. That'll make a nice transition. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this over. We're going to do exactly the same on this one right here, on this side. Get her all the way down there. Everything connects down to the tail here. They got a lot of tendons, a lot of, a lot of things. It's a lot tougher to skin out down here. Because everything seems to connect right down here. Well, we'll get her. If you make a little hole, don't worry about it. Make sure we don't get too rough with it. You can get, they aren't as tender as a crappie, but you still got to watch what you're doing. You just can't go after them like you, you got an axe in your hand. I'm going to turn him back so I can, I'm right handed so I got to work with him this way, okay? We don't want to work with him the other way. Okay, I've got the tail skinned out all the way down into there. Broke it loose with my knife. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get this out of there with this scissor. We're going to break it. We'll get her down in there. Like I say, it's a little bit tough. And you can feel it on the other side with your, your fingers. Now if you got just a little bit of hang up, go ahead and cut her loose. Let's see what we got, another pair of scissors here. I might have to... There we go. See that? We got that cut loose. Okay, now what we're doing, we're up into this fin area here. We're going to take our scissors and go right up along there. You can feel it. You can hear them popping as you uh, cut them loose. Put your finger on the other side. Go all the way up the back. You see how we went up there? Okay, see that? We're, we're working there forward. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep going all the way up the fins here. The fin rays, the butt of them actually goes into the, toward the backbone. You just got to keep cutting all the way up the back. And if you find an area where you're not all the way down there, get your knife out and cut her loose. You got to cut her loose. We're going to get down there. And you can see, watch it on the back side here. You can actually see your knife working. There you go. Anyway, we're, we're going right up the back there. Whether the fish likes it or not. You can hear them snapping. 
and you can feel it on your fingers if you're not careful. Okay? We're going to turn this guy over see if we got any meat hang-ups here. And see, we're, we're kind of getting her broke loose. I want to keep going up the back. I've got my other scissors here. Turn them back over. Make sure we're getting them good. If you run into anything where you think you need to cut loose, if it feels like it's hanging up, go ahead and cut it loose. You're not going to hurt anything at this stage. So you can see where the backbone goes up here. And they run almost all the way up into the head. You hear that? Those are big ones on the back right here. They're tough. They are really tough. You uh, really got, you got to have good scissors. There we go. I got the last one, I think. Now, what we're going to do is we got to cut everything loose here. We got to get this out of here. So what we're doing is we're just kind of you got your gill plate inside here. You're kind of going to have to kind of work around that, cut it loose. And you got kind of a bony structure that runs up under the gill here. Let me get this back here just a little bit. So I'm gonna Anyway, you see how I'm kind of getting that loose? I'm all the way done. I got it loose all the way up in there. And now we're going to just turn it over here to, onto this side. We're going to do the same thing. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and you'll see. We'll cut it loose right here. And it takes, it's a kind of a piece of bone that goes up there. It's kind of, it's hard to cut. There we go. Now, we've got this fish pretty much ready to come out of its skin. I've got to get this cut loose here. Make sure that we're all cut loose. Okay. I'm going to turn him around so you can see this. We've got everything cut loose here. We'll clean all this meat up out of here before we put it in the pickle. But here we've got to go down through the fish into the backbone. We've got to cut this fish loose. Backbone's the hardest part to get through. You need a good scissors. Uh, if you want, you can... If I wasn't saving the fillets, I'd just cut it right here, but we're saving the fillets, so I'm, I'm getting right down here to the backbone. I can feel the backbone right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scissors in there. And I'm gonna, you hear it pop? There we go. We got the backbone cut loose. Okay, now what it is is just some knife work. on both sides. We'll go ahead and get us a little cutting in here with the scissors. Make sure we cut loose. And really this thing should just about peel right on out of here. You see that? We're getting her. There, there she is right there. She's coming loose. We've got the stomach attached right here. Gonna get rid of it. That's pretty strong stuff there, holding that on that esophagus, I guess you call it. We're gonna go ahead and set it aside here, and there you go. You got that. Now we're interested in them getting him cleaned up. Okay. Got a lot of stuff here on the skin. 
We're going to get most of the heavy stuff off right now. Take your spoon, your heavy duty. Uh, <laughs> go right against the back and go against the grain. Don't go with the scales. Go against them. Go crossways, I guess is what it is. Get right up against the backbone and take that right on out of there. If you can. If you can't do it that way, do it any way you can get it out of there. You see that? Now we'll clean this up again when we get her out of the pickle. You'll see, you'll be able to see some of the stuff you missed. Especially down around the tail area. So like I said, they got a lot of tendons. Another thing you notice is right along the these fin rays here, just take your knife and go like so real gently. They got a layer of fat up against there. You want to get that out if you can. It's just one of those things. A lot of people don't get that and get some shrinkage. And then you got to use some caulk or something to build it up. But we're doing the same thing here now. We're, we're going down along the back. See that? Stuff we don't get this time, we'll get when we get it out of the pickle. Just before we mount it. And you'll notice this area here we got some. You sp they make fish fish uh, meat removers, you know, but I found that a spoon works pretty good. I'm I'm about as low tech as you get on this. I'm going with the grain here because I I feel like I can the scales. But don't do it if you don't have to. I did it. I make mistakes too. Okay, now it's up in this area you have some more meat. You got to be careful. You might pull this away, but that's no deal killer. Just go ahead and keep getting the meat out. Take your time. I know I'm going a little fast, but this is in the interest of saving tape space and that. But you see here, you got some meat here up under the gill plates. We'll get that out. Hopefully, you can make a living out of doing this. Uh, it takes a lot to make a living doing taxidermy. It's... Uh, you, if you're in a real populated area, you might be able to make a, actually a full-time job out of it. There's a few. I've been lucky enough to be able to do it full-time, and I'm not in a very populated area, but I think I'm doing things right. My repeat business is what's keeping me going. You know, even in hard times, people still get stuff taxidermied. You wouldn't think so, but they do. The people that hunt and fish, the outdoor market is good. Um, in fact, some of my best years have been these years where it hasn't been good for anybody else. Okay. Now what you do is if you didn't get close enough when you cut it off the back, you can go down along the back. Again, see this stuff? Go ahead and cut it off. Don't cut down into the skin here. Now, if you're beginning, be a little bit more careful than me. Uh, just take your time. Like I say, I'm not taking my time because I've got to get videos out, at least this video, in a timely manner. So, you don't want to spend all day watching a video. When you get just a few basics you need off of it. But anyway, you can see we're getting this baby pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of meat, but we'll, we'll clean that up as we go. Uh, let's see this side here. We'll turn it around and we'll get this side. Okay. And the same thing. Just go ahead and get the, get 
the meat off. We're going to go ahead. You'll see that exactly the same as the other side. You got a lot of meat. I'll put my finger under here to raise this up and we can get this meat out of here. Sometimes you might have to cut this meat off with the scissors. Works pretty good. Just follow your finger and get it off with the scissors. Okay? Easy enough for me to say, isn't it? But anyway, we got to... I'm going to go ahead and go after this here. Get this kind of a bony structure right up around the gill plate. Or the gill. And then, you know, when you get to your fin butts, there's a little bit of muscle there. Try to get that out. And then, if you don't, that's fine. But, I mean, we can we can deal with that. We can always put clay in there after it dries. But, I'd like to put clay in there before it dries. And that way you don't get the shrinkage. Okay. There we go. Now... I mean, it, it looks like a mess, I know. But it's not as bad as what it looks. We'll come back and we'll get that cleaned up. Now, here's the hardest part. Is the head area. We want to get up into here. we got to get up into the brain area here, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to go up in here. Cut all this stuff loose. Okay? We're going to keep working up the back here. Get the big stuff loose. But you got a bone up here. Goes into the head right here. What I want to do is I want to get that out of there. So I'm going to go on each side of that. Go up as far as I can and bust that loose. Okay. You see that bone? That's the back bone. That goes up to the brain area. What we're going to do is we're going to break that loose. This is tough because this is a big fish. It takes a lot to break that out of there. Then you just grab it and uh, give it a twist. Like and cut her loose. It's a little messy up in here. But anyway, you see we're clear up into the cavity, the brain cavity here. I can see the brain cavity right up in here. And then we've got to clean this meat out of here too. So I'm just taking my scissors. I'll pick away at this. Just be careful. Let me get my other scissors. I'll get this meat out of here so I can see what I'm doing in there. Got it cleared away here. I'm sorry if my arm's in the way, but you you get the gist of what I'm doing here. <laughs> the gist is get most of the meat out of there. You see a lot of that there. Take your spoon and just kind of tease that away. Keep getting meat. Now I've got a high backbone here, so I want to get rid of this down that thing. Or a high ridge on the fin. But it's a little bit easier for me to do this. This is kind of a welcome break from doing deer. I've been mocking deer for a couple weeks and the bow season, the rut just about over here now. You know, doing, getting my bow deer done, getting ready for the shotgun seasons to start. And uh, that's the way that goes. Just kind of a nice relief to get. I like doing deer and everything, but I like doing it all. 
I think these people are making a big mistake that specializing in deer. They're kind of like you might as well be working in a factory doing piecework. If you're just going to specialize in one thing, why not do it all? In fact, this lady here, she called several places that wouldn't even do it. And in our area, anyway, I'm about the only one that does pits. I'll figure that out. I don't know why you think somebody else would be doing fish. But anyway, okay, we got this as clean as I'm going to get it clean right here. This part of it now. Uh, we'll just recap what we did. We split her up the middle. There's going to be a pedestal mount. Split her up the middle, flayed it off both sides, cut the fin butts all the way around, cut the backbone all the way up into the head area, clean the head area out here. We'll clean it out more when it comes out of the pickle before we mount it. Make sure our form fits good. And we'll go through all that. Now what we got to do is get the eyes in the cheek patches. Okay? Let me get a... I got to get my hands cleaned off here. And we'll show you how to do the eyes. Okay, where's my spoon? You take your high-tech tool here, the other end of it, gouge your eye out. They'll give you a recommended eye size on your eyes when you get a form. This looks like about a 20 or 22 millimeter. So, we'll cut that eye loose. Okay, now, what you do, you, you can use, I'll use the fish knife on this side, now I'll use a regular one on the other side and show you. Uh, go up in the eye, cut her loose like, now see my blade right here? Very gently tease that back and forth in that cheek patch area. I'm going all the way up into here, you can see it moving. And then go all the way down. Now bring it out and turn it around, and I, I'll be able to get all the way down into that corner area right here. Now see, I got this, I got the cheek patch all broke loose on top. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to go on the bottom. You can feel the bony cheek on the bottom. And I'm, I'm breaking that bone, I'm breaking that meat loose from the bone as far as it'll go. Okay? And now what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and, and try to force that cheek meat out. And it's coming. See that cheek meat come out of there? That's, you get these fish like this, this is sometimes, if you don't get most of this cheek meat out, you'll end up in the summertime, you'll end up with bugs in there. And that isn't good, because that's a real mess to clean up. You get bugs burrowing in there, and then pretty soon you wonder where these flies coming from. Well, check your fish mounts. Because most of the time, it's, it's from them. And, and they can get in any little crevice. So you got to be very careful. It's impossible to remove every scrap of meat, but we're going to do our best to get most of it. And what you can do is you can put your finger up in here and see if you can feel any. I can actually see my finger through the skin. That's why you got to be kind of gentle because this stuff here, well, well, it'll actually cut through. And if it does, that's no biggie. But just kind of force that out of there. And just keep checking it with your fingers. If you feel any big chunks in there, see how much cheek meat come out of there? Look at that. That's a lot. And just go ahead and put your finger up in there. If you feel any, just go ahead and get, get, get it out. Get her done. But anyway, that's pretty good. And don't forget to get down into this area right here. There's some there's some meat in there you want to get. I can see it. Sometimes you have to. I can see it coming. There we go. This is probably one of the touch hardest parts to do. 
but I can feel in there and I don't feel much meat at all. You can see my finger moving around there. That's how thin that skin is. And if you cut, if you end up breaking through the skin here, don't worry about it. We can always patch that. Okay, we'll turn it over. Take our high tech tool and get the eye out. Remove the eye. And now eyes don't come out all that easy. I don't know why. But they're they're the bigger the fish, man, they really got some some stuff going on there. Okay, now if you just have a regular knife like this, you gotta be very careful. Go up and do the same thing. Go up along the top of the skin. You can see that knife blade. I can see the knife blade here almost coming through. Right here. I go all the way up to the back wall there. Some people actually split them here and fold them back so they can get all that out. But that that's more work to do when you go model try to get put them back together now I got the top part done now we're doing the bottom I can feel the knife blade I got big chunks of meat in there go from top to bottom flip your knife over okay do whatever you can to get that meat out that's one of the toughest things there is is getting your cheek meat out because you don't want bugs fish will give you bugs if you don't clean them good okay I'm still working on this trying to get to this back wall okay I'm up against the skin here now I got all that broke loose and going to the bottom now what I'm doing I'm turning my knife over I did the bottom too I'm just kind of forcing it out and then when you get to a certain point you can't get anymore use your handy fish tool with the back of the spoon if this is all you got don't don't invest in these tools unless you're going to do this for a living or a, or a hobby you know and then you still got to have tools but you can get by with a lot of different things I made a lot of my own stuff I mean this is we're getting there I can do almost, if I wanted to round this off a little bit with a grinder, I'd have myself a heck of a tool here. But I'd get by just fine with this. But anyway, and if you get stuff that's hanging on by a tendon, just go ahead. Now I can, I can feel some meat in here still, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here and cut it loose. And we'll check it again before we mount it up, after it's been in the pickle. But okay. Got her checked. Got her checked. That's it. We got our fish done. Now what we did is we split her up the belly instead of up the side. Up the side is easier. Remember that. If you're doing just a, a single-sided mount, but this is going to be a double-sided mount, don't worry about losing one or two scales here and there. Flight it out. Got everything out of the brake cavity. Uh, we got the eyes out. Got the cheek meat out. We're ready to put it in a pickle. It'll be. I'm going to order up the form today. It'll be here in a couple days. And uh, rinse this off in water before you put it in the pickle, okay? And uh, I'll get back with you when we get ready to mount this, okay? Thanks for listening.